Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. This is Jason Newland. Or rather, I am Jason Newland. And please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. You may be able to hear a little bit of a buzzing sound in the background. Don't be alarmed. It's just the uh, laptop. Because yesterday I was going to read out the or go through the stats for May, yes, yeah, so it's June now. So I was going to go through the stats of May 2019, but I ended up talking about other stuff and I ended up talking, starting off talking about thanking people. And then I didn't end up thanking individual people. So yeah, so in my mind, I was going <coughs> to, excuse me, in my mind I was going to go through the stats and then when I pressed record, I was going to thank people and then, yeah, so I kind of lost track of you know, kind of everything. Not everything in the world, but just, you know, everything um, that I was going to say. Not that I plan what I'm going to say, but I do sometimes give it a tiny bit of consideration. But... Uh, So what I'm going to do is go to Facebook and I'm going to read out a few names. A few names. I'm just going to read out the first name, not a surname, just in case uh, you don't want your surname read out on a podcast. But you'll know who you are if you're listening just seen a Facebook page uh, post and it's really funny which isn't very I don't normally see stuff like that it's (laughs) it's from a lady called Angela it starts OMG did you hear about the boy who was I won't read the rest of it but um, it's a funny funny joke Okay. Right. So what other things is there? So I'm I'm distracted now. I'm distracted, doesn't I? So what I thought I'd do is go through some of the people that are that have been supportive to me over the years I'd like to say thank you to everybody really this is kind of like my acceptance speech for an award that not only was I not nominated for but doesn't even exist but that's okay because the main thing is that I'm able to make something up and fill this hour Okay, let's have a look. So, 
let me go through the through the people I've got 3,912 friends on my normal Facebook page and the top ones the ones that come up at the, fr at the top are the ones that have from the looks of it the people I have the most interaction with so let's go through the friends on my Facebook so Jody, she's actually number one on my friends list as, as it kind of shows under all friends uh, so Jody, uh, she's one of my friends in America and she's a comedian used to call, be called comedian but now it's just a comic basically she's a She's a stand-up comic in America, and she writes comedy, and uh, yeah, so thank you to Jodie, it's the first person saying thank you to, and I've known Jodie for a few years now, quite a few years I think, she's been listening to my recordings um, and contacted me it's quite a long time ago. We've spoken a few times on Skype, not Skype, on Facebook. I'm now distracted by something that's on telly. Um, it's a film called No Sex Please, We're British. And it's a 1974 film and it's got Ronnie Corbett in it. But, and he's holding a book, yeah. As you say, he's holding a big book, but he's quite little, so it might just be a normal sized book. But, uh, yeah, I was just distracted by what was on the screen. And now Andre's run over. No matter how much paper I put onto the floor, newspaper, he always has to go right to the edge of the newspaper that's near the carpet and uh, offload his worries that's yeah, one word for it so anyway the next person is Brooke so I'd like to say thank you to Brooke for uh, her support in uh, I haven't known her that long it's probably been out a year maybe over a year now and she contacted me to say that um, my sessions are useful and she told me that she listened to the one of the recordings I did for Nail Biting and it really helped so and she's also uh, sent me a donation in the past and I've chatted to her as well on Facebook quite a few times she's uh, been really supportive towards what I'm trying to do and well I'm not sure what I'm trying to do but sort of uh, very positive very positive person right the next person is called oh yeah and Brooke is a dean of a university and she um, deals with asphasia uh, caused by I think I got that right, brought by st for people that have strokes, so she's very much in the healing profession. She's also written a book as well. So uh, we've got Juju, um, and that's the next person. And it's J-U-J-U, J -U, that's how it's spelled. And in her picture, she's wearing a hat. And the next per, <laughs> that's all I've got to say about her. She's wearing a hat. She's actually an artist, and she lives in Wales. Uh, Brooke lives in America, uh, so Juju lives in Wales. And I got a real thing for the Welsh accent. It's the only accent that I actually, not the only accent that I like, but it's the only accent that. I wouldn't say it gives me tingles because that was that's a bit weird, but I 
think the reason for it is this. When I was a kid, when I was young, there was a television show called Heidi High. And it was based in a uh, holiday camp. Kind of like a Butlins or Pontins. If, uh, I don't know if everyone knows what that is, but you can Google it. Butlins, Pontins, they're basically a place where you'd go maybe with your family and they'd have chalets that you could stay in and they'd have swimming pools and they'd have, not in the chalets, but they'd be like, just everything you needed for a holiday would be there. It's a bit like Disney World, but without the fun. No, that, that's the wrong way to describe it. It's a bit like, no, no, Disney World. Do you get to stay at Disney World? Disneyland, you visit, but Disney World, do you... S- uh, it's like a... I suppose it's like a caravan site, but without the caravans. But, you know, some caravan sites have lots of uh, things to do, like maybe a swimming pool, an arcade, uh pubs, bars, leisure centre, you know, all things like that. So that's what uh, Butlins and Pontins, uh, I don't know if Pontins is still around, but Butlins is. Anyway, there was a lady on this TV programme called Heidi High, and there's quite a few people on the show, if it wasn't just her, and there was a bloke who used to walk around in horse gear. I don't mean he wasn't dressed as a horse, um, but as a horse rider, you know, like a jockey. And of course, a jockey is a different name, isn't it, in America? That's isn't that like a young man that goes to university that's thick, isn't it? Isn't that, isn't that the name isn't that what a jockey is in America? Someone that's a bit dim. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going by what's on the films. I'm sure they're like jock. No, it's a jock, isn't it? But then a jock could be Scottish. But I don't know if that's if we can use that word anymore. I'm not sure. I've, I, haven't, I haven't used it myself probably ever, actually. But I've seen it seen it being used when I was younger but Butlins yeah pot the Heidi High and there was another man who was had a moustache and he used to be the I think head of entertainment so he'd compare the shows and then there was his kind of not understudy but kind of his uh, assistant but also used to do lots of stuff and they'd stay in the same chalet together and have a little cuddle and stuff when the cameras were off just you know basically they obviously loved each other but it it was the early 80s and they couldn't show that but they clearly pushed their beds together and lived a happy life but they couldn't because you know it was very small minded uh, you know in those days you know uh, marriage wasn't legal for everybody back in the early 80s but they clearly loved each other um, I don't know how it would work though because one having a moustache wouldn't that tickle I've been told that beards and moustaches tickle when you kiss someone with them and I've got a beard. Technically, I've got a beard and a moustache. Because a beard can be just on your chin, can't it? That's what a beard is, really, isn't it? A beard. Your chin, up on your face, your cheeks, up to your sideburns. 
yet if the moustache, if the if you still got moustache as well as the beard, it's just classed as a beard. Or maybe the word full, it's a full beard instead of a partial beard. But I've never ever never heard anyone say the word. Oh, did you see? Do you know the uh, Bob? Bob, which one is he? Oh, he's the one with the partial beard. Never heard anyone say that. And so Heidi High, uh, they also had uh, two dancers, uh, a man and a lady, and they danced, and they did ballroom dancing. And they were very stuck up. Their characters were very kind of, they looked down on everyone, uh, which... um, kind of wondered why they'd get a job in Butlins but they didn't because it was what was it called Heidi High maybe it was called Heidi High maybe that was a call the name of the the camp Pinklins I bet it was something Ings and oh yeah and there was what's her name who had glasses I used to wear a hat or a scarf on her head and she was a cleaner but she wanted to be a red coat or a blue coat or a green coat whichever uh, colour coat it was which because in Butlins and Pontins they had if you became if you got promoted to be an entertainer you got given a red coat or a green coat or a blue coat or something like that and that's what she wanted so much. Now the ballroom dancers had yellow coats, I think. The horsey man had a helmet. He had. He used to walk around with a horse helmet on all the time, which made me think that might have been less to do with a horse. And maybe he just had problems and he had to be careful. Uh, to not bang himself I, I don't know um, maybe his chalet he had like a really small chalet but he was slightly taller than the average jockey so therefore he kept banging his head because instead of being four foot tall he was four foot two which meant that he couldn't get through the front door. And that might be a situation, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to ask him next time I see him. Who else worked there? And the main character, well, for me, there was two main characters, really. There was the, the one that wanted to become a a red coat or green coat whatever and then there is the the Welsh lady who was pretty much in charge of everything she was the she wasn't the big boss she wasn't the manager but she was the like the second in charge and she kept falling in love with the manager so there was two managers there while the show was on and she fell in love with both of them and one was a bit of a womanizer and the other one was very nervous so yeah but she loved them and anyway she used to do, they used to have this tannoy system with these speakers all around the camp and she used to say she used to have a little glocking like a miniature glocking spill where she'd like ding 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 and then she'd say good morning campers that's my Welsh accent and uh, and then she'd give like a little uh, 
I don't know, update on the weather and what was going to be occurring that day or what was about to start. So maybe, oh, now we're going to have um, the alligator fight or, uh, you know, whatever it was. And, uh, you know, all the kids would rush up and jump into the swimming pool, you know, with the alligators. It was just, you know, and she used to say, hi, di, hi. And everyone else that was outside used to shout, ho, di, ho. Very good writing. It was well written. And the it was a very, very popular television show. Went on for years and years. And... I, I still watch it now sometimes when it's on they show like old episodes they can't show new ones can they but uh, yeah I sometimes watch it and although I wasn't in love with her at the time because I was I don't know 10 when it was on I just I don't know, I like the accent I don't remember knowing any other Welsh speakers. Like, it must be something that triggered me to like the accent. I used to go on holiday to Wales uh, when I was a kid as well. So maybe that's it. Maybe, I don't know, I just like the accent. Just one of those things. I don't know, it's... There's no accents that I dislike. Um, there are some accents that I find a little bit difficult to understand sometimes or in the past. But, you know, I think it's not so much the accent as the speed of the talking. Because even if someone's from the south of England like me, or the southeast of England, if they talk very quickly, I did notice I just did a little whistle then when I said that. If they talk quick, quickly, I can't always keep track of what's being said. And I think that's partly due to maybe my ears, because I've had a little bit of problems with my ears since I was born, one of them anyway. And the on the paper, Andre. Sorry, I can't believe it. It's like the tide's coming in with him. Seriously, it's just every, what he does is getting closer and closer to my table. I should go somewhere else. I don't mean like move out, but just. Oh, and he's right in the window now. So I really like that that show, but um, I ended up going and working in Butlins in 1995 for the winter season, and I. Uh, it's quite a weird situation because I travelled was it I lost yeah that's it I was getting evicted from my home you know with a date that I needed to get out and so I had nowhere to live I had no idea what to do and I went into, I didn't have a job either. So I went to the job center, kind of to get a bit of advice, because oh, what am I gonna do? And this is in the days when job centers used to actually help you to get jobs. They used to, that's what they did. They, you know, they'd have, 
I remember years ago, there was this little job centre where I lived, and they used to have cards in the window. A bit like, I don't know if other countries have this, but in newsagent windows in England, uh, quite often there's like cards in the window advertising stuff. Maybe a vacuum cleaner for sale, uh, or maybe a chair, or a desk, sometimes a sofa. Um, you know, it's, there's a variety of different objects that could be available, or people that might want to sell, but. It's kind of similar to that, but it had jobs. So there'd be, for example, warehouse operative, and the hours and the wage, you know, and uh, kind of a little bit, little description of the job and what they're looking for. So if they needed someone who could drive a forklift, as an example, then um, I guess, I, you know, I'd look at it and I'd think, well, let me do a little uh, check. Uh, can I drive a forklift? And then I'd, I'd remember that no, haven't got a driving license and then I'd think but do I need a driving license to be able to drive a forklift and then I'd come back and I'd think yeah well that's besides the point it's a case of what can you do and I can't drive a forklift I've never never tried but that's the point could I though it, it, for me it was the question of asking can you drive a forklift and there's lots of things that I can probably do, but I don't realise I can do. You know, I'm sure people that do the splits for the first time perhaps didn't know they could do the splits. You know, you have to... Everything has to be done for the first time. Um, standing on your head. I mean, it's hard to work your way up to standing on your head. What do you do first? You kneel, kneel down first. You know, what? I don't know how we would work up to it. Stand on your chest. Stand on your neck. So yeah, I. Could I, drive a forklift? Didn't say have I. Have you driven a forklift? The answer is, well, no. No, I haven't. Emphatically, really, honestly, I haven't done that. And uh, I don't mind admitting it. But can you? That's the question, isn't it? Maybe I could. I've done lots of things that I didn't think I'd be able to do. I've got a degree. Didn't think I could do that. I got a girlfriend pregnant, didn't think I could do that. I mean, at one point I crossed the road on all, all by myself. I did my own shoelaces up. I didn't think I could do that. So there's lots of things that I could do that I didn't think I could do, but then when I tried to do them and it worked out okay. And for me, it's a case of just thinking, well, perhaps I could drive a forklift. And then I start thinking, but do I want to? I'm not sure. I'm going back quite a few years. I was probably 17 or something at the time. So it's over five years ago. And... 
and some people say but you're 48 that's it's it's 30 odd years ago I said yeah it's it's over five years then isn't it that really gets people I love to say that yeah it was when I was 10 so it's it's over over six years ago well, it's when you were 10 you know it's 38 years ago isn't it yeah it's over six years you should try that it annoys people it really does so I'm now distracted by what's on television if you ever watch this film you'll possibly see parts of it that could distract me there's a man with a moustache in his dressing gown um, a very unrealistic situation is occurring there so I won't go into it it's all gentle fun but very unrealistic and so what else oh, there'd be other jobs there as well like office workers um, supermarket assistants cleaners you know a variety of different jobs and they'd be on the outside and the inside so they've been printed on both sides so when the office you know the shop the was open you could go inside and look at the jobs inside there's more to look at inside because they'd have like a rack a nice big rack which you could uh, spin round a bit like you know those book racks or DVD racks that they sometimes have in big stores and you can turn them around so they can fit lots of different things on them um, so I used to enjoy looking at those racks uh, because there's more to choose from it was and usually when I was at the racks other people kind of left it's hard to have more than one person looking at the same time so I just uh, yeah and what else I can't remember how I started talking about a job centre oh yeah so the job centre I went to in 95 it probably wasn't quite the same as that it it changed a little bit but not that much because it had been maybe 8 years before that I'm describing so a huge amount hadn't changed it hadn't gone all electronic or you know internet-y as it is now and I I went in there in the past there was occasionally recruitment people uh, in my memory it was more like uh, armed forces recruitment so you go in there and it'd be a man in a you know, army uniform or a naval uniform and they'd be trying to recruit people that that you know that needed jobs and I didn't I don't know no I didn't get involved in any of that although I did I actually I did apply to join the army when I was 16 and I did apply to join the navy when I was 19 and I applied to join the marines when I was 23 um, so I'll tell you about the marines I was with Andre, the original Andre, my uh, Irish friend, 
who was my best friend at the time and that's who Andre is named after anyway we were walking down Leighton High Road I think it was and it was a summer's day and we were just skipping hand in hand you know how you do and for some reason he stopped and I said what are you doing lover and he said don't call me lover in public I said okay he said <laughs> he said um, why well, what? I said what are you doing he said oh look I said look at what and he said look at that and I looked because it seemed rude not to and I figured that was the easiest way to end the conversation as quickly as possible if I went along with it so I said okay then oh here we go here's another a moth on the pavement that I've got to look at but it wasn't it wasn't a moth it was uh, it was a sign saying Royal Marines apply within now I didn't think it would be that di that not difficult I didn't think it would be that, that easy because I don't know why just the the Marines the Marines always seem to be quite prestige and I thought they'd be they'd, I don't know I thought it I didn't think they'd be sort of advertising in that way it was it's very similar to like just a a local shop you know staff needed and I thought oh anyway he wanted to go in and I thought well I don't want to stay out here on my own so I went in with him for a laugh really it wasn't a laugh at all but uh, if you go into a place like that it's serious business they're not there to mess around uh, which I found out quite quite quickly after I started being silly and they uh, locked me in a cell no they didn't and um, on my friend Andre said I can't remember what he, he spoke too quickly I could never really understand what he was talking about that's why I think we were friends for so long neither of us could understand each other uh, and he basically, you know, the, the bloke that was in there said, yeah, we were recruiting, but you have to do a physical exercise test now, and then you'll have, you can come back and have a written test, and then you go away for a, a weekend or do a another, like, weekend physical thing, and then then you sign up and you go into training for however many months so I said Ugh. and uh, Andre said ooh so he was really excited so they had this bar not like bar for drinking a bar like a pull up bar exercise thing and so they asked us to do press ups, sit ups, and then pull ups. And Andre did more than me the pull ups. Now, admittedly, I wasn't prepared to have a physical test. You know, I was slim, I was fairly fit, um, but I wasn't kind of prepared to be doing push no, pull-ups. And he used to like doing pull-ups. It was one of his things that he enjoyed doing. He'd actually go to the park, to the children's park, the children's play area, you know, and he'd do pull-ups just to show off. But because he was so little, I think a lot of the parents just figured he was another kid. 
He's the same size as me. I can't believe it. He just. Do you ever meet someone and they just look little, but they're not? So he was five eight, and I'm five eight. But he just, and he was, he was muscly and everything. But he just looked. He walked a little bit like Popeye. You know Popeye, like the cartoon, his big arms and his like shoulders and shape. You know, he walked like that, but he was short, like me. He just looked. I don't know, it looked funny. And so after doing these tests, the the man in charge, I think he'd been eating a sandwich because he had, had a bit of cheese sticking out of his beard. He said, OK, Andre. It was like one of those uh, talent shows. We were just lining up and like waiting to know who's going to get through. He said, Andre, you were fine. You, you passed everything. You can come back and do the written exam if you want to do that. And they said, uh, Stephen, because I was not given my real name. No way. He said, uh, you can... You can get out of here. Now he, he said, you need to just spend a couple of weeks getting a little bit fitter so you can then come back and do the pull-ups again. Because he could see that I was naturally incredibly strong, but I clearly left my strength at home that day. So he, he saw, you know, Clearly, he must he figured that I must have muscles somewhere, but he wasn't sure where. So uh, didn't realise that most of my muscles were in my brain. That's why I'm so damn clever. <laughs> yeah, right. The thing is, I actually think that I would have equaled, or if not done better, in the written test than Andre. But again, probably not. I don't know. But you know what? Andre didn't want to go in without me. That's quite sweet, isn't it? And I was never going to go back to, you know, to have to retake the pre the pull-up test. And Andre didn't want to didn't want to continue without me doing it. Plus he um, he told his sister about wanting to join the Marines. And I don't know if this was connected at all, but within about, uh, I'd say at least 25 hours, his mum and family were on the doorstep, come from Ireland, because I think they were worried about him. They didn't want him to join the Marines. And go to war so I mean technically it would have been quite good as an undercover spy dress him up as a schoolboy. I say that was my suggestion but the uh, his mum didn't agree so nothing happened there we didn't go but I did never end up moving to Ireland with Andre. Well, he, he went first, and then I followed, and I stayed at his parents. And, but before that, when I was 16, I worked in a chip shop. And the idea of going out to, going to war in another country didn't seem too bad. Uh, it was like anything to escape the, the smell of frying fish and chips. So I applied, I did the physical, got through that. I did the me um, the medical, got through that, you know. did So everything was fine. I did the written test, got through that. And they 
gave me a date where I was going to go to for the weekend to have a weekend of training of tests to make sure that I was physically um, you know able to join like it's, it's a, in the weekend is like some kind of really intensive thing well I chickened out and I didn't go which considering I'm a pacifist it's probably quite a good idea um, yeah though I didn't go but it's still a little bit of me thinking oh it could have been an opportunity to I could have you know I could have I might have met someone, you know. I might have met a nice lady while I was on leave. Could have gone AWOL. You know, just all that kind of things that I missed out on. But maybe made some really good friends, you know, lifelong friends. But in retrospect, with my bipolar, with my mental... I don't, I'm not laughing at bipolar, but just the idea of having the mental health issues that I've had without going to war. Imagine what I'd have been like if I'd have gone into that. Because, yeah, so I probably it was a good idea that I didn't. But I didn't learn from that because in 2000 no in 1990 1980 1989 and this would have been probably October 1989 I said I went to the Navy office the Naval and I said um, <clears throat> excuse me I went would you know a I'm interested in joining the Navy. And that was a much shorter conversation than the Army one. Because, you know, I was in and out of the Army place probably about ten times, sort of doing various different things. And uh, because I got to know the bloke quite well and we became quite friendly actually. But the, you know, I ended up not going in. But with the Navy one, I went in there, I said, I'm interested in joining the Navy. Am I too old? And he said, how old are you? And I said, I'm 19, just turned 19. He said, no, it's fine. And he said, uh, he said, but I just, just got to warn you something, warn you about something. I said, what's that? He said, well, we're going to be, um, we're going to be in Iraq soon and we're going to be at war. I said, what? He said, yeah, we're going to be at war soon in Iraq. I said, why is that not in the papers? He said, oh, well, he didn't know what to say, I don't think. So I said, no, you're right then. Because my brother was in the Navy and I think that's probably why I kind of maybe wanted to not following his footsteps but just thought it might be a good way to build a life you know some kind of a life but the idea of going to war no it was 1990 not 89 it was 1990 so I was 20 so 1990 uh, about October and I pretty much yeah so and he said oh yeah we're going to war with Iraq I thought and he was like looking he, I think he gets got something out of his well, I just imagine this what happened after he said it to me he probably looked down got something out of his uh, desk drawer and then looked up and said hello Richard, where are you? Where are you? 
because I disappeared. As soon as he said that, I just like was gone. And of course, I didn't give him my real name. Which is weird because in the January or February that year, that the following year, 91, is when, you know, America and England and different places went to Iraq. So they knew a long time in advance. There you go. Um, so I never did join any of the armed forces, but I did go through some of the process of it. But I think it's, I don't know, it's part of me thinks, oh, it might have been all right. But I've met a lot, well, not a lot, but I've met quite a few ex-forces that are kind of my age and uh, even in the past it's you know if you live in a such a structured environment with all your friends for like 10 years or something and then suddenly you're back in Civvy Street it can be regardless of what's happened it can be it can be a little bit difficult you know to sort of it's I suppose if you're used to walking around with a big jelly on a plate balanced on your head and then suddenly they replace the jelly with custard it's kind of oh okay now it's it's a little bit of a different situation Great analogy. So, I was in this job centre, and uh, there was no one. There, it wasn't a, like a armed forces, uh, you know, trying to get people to join. But there was a holiday camp. A person wanting to get lots of people to go and work at Butlins all over the country there's quite a few different Butlins there's one in Wales one in I don't know different part, different parts anyway I I had nothing else so what I did is I, I applied and they said yes there and then I had a job interview and they gave me a job as a bar worker, working in a bar and I was able to stay unemployed at the same time and they just gave us an extra £10 a week or something and so it was kind of some kind of scheme that was put together with the job centre and Butlins and I wasn't there long. I was there for four or five weeks. But it was very, very uh, interesting experience. Very interesting. And there was there was one point. I made quite a few friends actually. And there was one situation. Is a uh, I used to get into the karaoke and sing and it was quite weird one day there was a group of people they asked, someone asked me do you want would you want to be a red coat or a green coat or blue coat or yellow coat whatever whatever the entertainment coat is and I said yeah but I don't know maybe one day if I could and they they said why don't you apply I said no and they said, go on. I said, no. And they forced me. They physically lifted me up. So there was probably about eight or nine people. I'm, I'm not sure. They lifted me above their heads and carried me into the office. Uh, the, like the, the entertainment management office or whatever it was. And... Uh, They said, we think our friend should be in the entertainment 
we should we th- we think uh, Adrian should be a red coat because he's a great entertainer and uh, the the lady said who's Adrian that's everyone pointing to me of course I wasn't sure because sometimes I forget what false names I give people and <laughs> I think it was like one person said I thought he was Ted so I thought, shh, shh, shh don't tell everyone I'm Ted for you but no one else just call me Teddy and uh, and the lady or the man it's one of them that was behind the counter of things saying well we're not actually recruiting at the moment it's the next recruitment won't be till like before spring probably March April time well, probably March time and uh, that was fine we all you know it's like okay cool so we went back down we went to the bar had a few drinks spent a probably spent the next four hours it was I was on such a high actually because I felt like I don't know it's, it's a special feeling it was a really lovely feeling that these people actually believed in me believed that I was potentially good at something you know admittedly it wasn't forklift driving which is what I would have preferred but you know you go with what what is available and you know even though it didn't work out it was still a lovely I don't know it's quite a special thing I forgot all about it until just now I might be making it up but I'm pretty sure it's true and uh, so we spent the next probably three or four hours drinking and just chatting and stuff and uh, I remember I said uh, guys I, I need to go to the toilet and they were like just ignored me I said listen I need to go to the toilet you know because and I said yeah why and someone shouted out yeah why yeah so I said well, I need you to let me down I need you to put me down I need to go to the toilet so they all like put me down back onto the floor and uh, I went to the toilet end of act that was the end <laughs> the end of that bit of uh, interest and story and there was you know I'd, I kind of would have loved to have stayed there but you know it's, I was moody I was moody back then didn't know what it was just moods so I left came back to London and again had nowhere to live but found somewhere and uh, then I became a security guard but my time at Butlins I'll never forget it well I've forgotten a bit of it probably it was a very very unusual situation it's uh, it's an experience that nothing comes close to nothing that I've experienced before comes close to that Um, in any other situation nothing it's just very everything's so um, everything's there you know you do everything together you eat together you you sleep together but uh, you like share a room I'd share a room with one person Uh, although I think most people I got through a few people because I think it was my snoring people like to move out quite quickly which was good so I got the room to myself and it was just I can't go into details really but there's lots of very unusual things happening 
it's uh, but at the same time it's yeah I, w I wouldn't I don't know if I would change it I mean that that winter was really warm up to the end of the year I was walking around in a little jacket that I got in Ireland and I was all the way in December I was walking around in a little jacket maybe a jumper but a little jacket wasn't wrapped up didn't have gloves on no skis no hat I didn't even have a beard back then I used to shave did I used to shave? you know I think I did I'm not saying as if, oh, did I shave yet? No, no, I, I was shaving. I was old enough. Been shaving since I was... 22, I think. Not just my face. No, I do. I've shaved my chest in the past. Just, just thought I'd let you know that. You know what's really weird about shaving your chest? Obviously, I'm sure not everybody that's listening to this has done this. But it's something strange because the chest and other areas other than the face are different from the face. Being a, a facial hairy person is... When I've shaved my chest, the hair comes back. But it stops at a certain length. It stops growing. It just stays at that length. Because if it didn't, can you imagine what would happen? Just thinking about it, if the body hair grew the way a beard grows, and we never shaved, even the slimmest people would have to wear X, 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 L tops just to fit all the hair in. Everyone would be just huge or look huge because of all that hair. So I guess maybe that's why. Because I've got a hairy chest. It's... Um, it's hairy, but it's not. It's not Magnum PI hairy. It's not Buck Rogers hairy. Those of you that know those references will know what I mean. So it's not. It's not that level of hairiness. And I'm actually ginger. I'm ginger puby person. So, like. In my beard, I had ginger hairs in my beard. I did, it's not all ginger, I've got dark brown hair, but I've also got ginger in my beard and also on my chest. And further down in places where no one dare go, dare go, <laughs> dare go, dare go. And I just call it the smelly place, but my ginger beard parts turned grey first so I'm not saying that all the grey hairs that I've got on my head or in my beard were ginger to start with but a lot of them were and I haven't got a big grey beard I've got grey hairs in my beard more at the bottom like the chin kind of the middle of the the sides of the chin area and I've probably got some grey hairs on my chest but I'll be honest with you I don't spend a lot of time topless looking in the mirror you know I'm trying to I'm, try, I'm trying to keep positive that won't help me if I spend a lot of time looking at myself in the mirror 
so um, and as far as I the only I have to look in the mirror if I want to see any of the other hairs because my belly gets in the way I can't see anything the only time I can see my feet is if I actually walk like when I'm standing still I, I don't even know if I've got feet that's okay so I was at Butlins and it was a really good experience it was an emotional experience I'll quickly go for a couple of other people before I end because again I've gone over time Bex say thank you to Bex for following me I've chatted to her as well a couple of times it's a lovely lady Cassie another person that I've spoken to online uh, she's um, benefited from one of my recordings and I actually did it if I remember I actually did it for her she asked for a recording and I did one I, if I'm right I might be wrong there I do often lie so um, but I think I made that recording just especially for her and it worked this was about eight, seven or eight years ago I think um, Ashley from Liverpool I think and uh, so she's just say hi to her I've spoken to her a couple of times not lately but she's uh, another lovely person that follows me on Facebook and I'm not sure if she used to listen to my stuff I don't know okay, I'm not sure who listens like regularly or daily um, I've got John uh, he's been following me for years on YouTube as well as you know on Facebook and stuff because YouTube used to be my main place that I was at uh, f you know for a long time now it's kind of more of podcasts uh, so a big hello to Ed Adini drawn I say his full name because he's a, he's a fellow online hypnotist and he's also a magician as well so he does he has lots of very popular videos on his YouTube channel which is way 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 more popular than even my most popular YouTube channel from years ago he's got millions of views and he does hypnosis videos as well as magic videos as well so check him out Edini E-D-D-I-N-I -I. Um, I've actually got an interview I did with him on New Year's Eve it's on YouTube uh, say hello to Angela uh, Letitia or Letty she's another friend that I've known since 2010 or 2000 yeah 2009 maybe actually wow or 2010 one of them it's a long time anyway nearly 10 years Letty in America she lives near Mexico so the, on the border of Mexico I can't remember the El Paso I think uh, we've got Fiona Fiona she's got about a million different names Percy I like to call her Percy so th hello to Percy and your husband uh, thank you for your support and the uh, kind words that you've said in the past um, there's Ella there's Beth Marie hi Beth Marie and Alex William Smith who's one of my trainers my hypnosis trainers I did training with him um, 95 96 time and there's Trevor Andrew Vidimore so check out Trevor Vidimore uh, V-I-D-A-M-O-U-R because he's written two really great books so check them out it's worth uh, going on to Amazon and uh, checking them out and there's so many different people I could just say hello to there's Claire Sheila Amy Lorraine Yannicka Janica, Yannicka Natty 
Eric Schmumpkin, there's Kardihan, Kadihan, I'm sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly, Sherry, Julie, Linda, Sheila, Rachel, uh, from Canterbury. That's another one of my friends that I've uh, spoken to online when I've done my live sessions and she's been following me for years and years as well. And you've got Diane, you've got Laurie, Rick, Sue, Irene. Hi, Irene. And there's Carrie, Carrie Joanne. Um, very funny posts. Very, very funny posts. Also, two of my, two of the funny, funniest posters that you know, do really funny posts. Juju, who I mentioned earlier, and um, Carrie Joanne. They just, uh, yeah, their posts make me laugh. You got Mickey Smith. Oh, Mickey. Sorry, I'm trying not to say people's surnames. Joyce. Uh, Genia. 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 Nicole, Alexandra, Laurie, Loretta, Loretta, uh, Katie, Cher, Gemma, you've got Sarah S, there's a lovely picture there, um, so there's quite a few different ones, Matthew, Matthew W, that's her surname starts with W, so Matthew. Hi Matthew, you sent me a message recently. Um, thanks for your kind words. Adam W, another W, surname beginning with W, Adam, uh, who been following me for quite a few years as well. So, yeah, thanks for everyone. I can't go through everybody because I'm going to have to bring this to an end because it's now getting late. But Angela Larson. I'm going to use her surname because she's one of my oldest, not age-wise, but one of my longest followers who's been following me a long, long time. Long time. We're talking uh, a long time, over 10 years. And uh, she once took me on holiday with her. She had me on a podcast and made a video. And uh, that's really cool. And there's so many other people on here. Go, there's someone here, Goli. So who's who's that? I probably sp can. Sounds like an Irish name. Lives lives in Maryland. Is that in the, oh. oh, I don't know. I was just looking at this. Uh, spotted WWE. Oh, okay. Now, sometimes I see pictures of people and I think, oh, I recognise that person. So there's a picture of a... All right. Anyway, so that's kind of it. Perhaps tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, I'll uh, say thank you to everybody that's on my "Let Me Bore You to Sleep" podcast, um, uh, the Facebook page, which is just basically if you just go on "Let Me Bore You to Sleep." Dot, uh, if you let, go to "Let Me Bore You to Sleep," click just write that into Facebook, and the Facebook page should come up. The let me boy the sleep dot com website may be down um because I've not been able to pay the the monthly fee yet for that. But so I'm not sure what to do about that yet, but it might be down uh, well it might be down until it's paid if I pay it. So that's all for today. Hopefully I bored you. I uh, had a message earlier from, who was it that sent me a message? Somebody. 
So it's an, a special message to. Gemma Alice, Gemma Alice's mum. So a message sent from her, but saying the message basically. Um, last night I introduced my mum to your "Let Me Boy You to Sleep" podcast on Spotify. She said she found your voice very soothing, and something she thought she would, that would help her to fall asleep. So she was listening while in bed, but was still awake at three a.m. because she found you so funny. Not to worry though, she said she'll still listen during the day instead. Um, well, to Gemma's mum, uh, hopefully, well, thank you know, thank, thank you for listening. Hopefully, I've been able to be a bit more boring today. So, thanks for listening, and I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs>